Uh oh, look at this. Hello, Zeus. Hey, buddy. You sleeping down there? Daddy's doing more videos. Are you tired? Zeus. I love you, buddy. Okay, here we are. Question number 27. We're asked to take this equation, 2x squared plus 5x plus 7 equals 0, and to solve it algebraically. Now, the direction solving algebraically simply mean that you should not be doing this on your calculator by using the zeros. In this class, you were taught one way to solve a quadratic equation would be to put, put it in standard form and then enter this into the graphing calculator as a function and then use the zero option on the calculator to find the zeros of the function, which of course are going to be the answers or solutions of this equation. The minute I tell you algebraically, it means no calculator, you know, in terms of how to solve it. So when I have a quadratic equation that I'm trying to solve, I always tell my students to try to factor it first. Put it in standard form. See if factoring is appropriate. Because you're certainly not going to use the square root property here since there's a middle term. That's not going to work. And I think you'd find out after a while factoring is not going to work here either. So you basically have two choices remaining. Completing the square, which here would get a little nasty. Because if you divided by 2, the middle coefficient would become fractional. Then you'd be working with lots of fractions. I personally would jump right into the quadratic formula. A is 2. The leading coefficient is 2. The, middle, the coefficient of the middle term is 5. And the constant term is 7. Okay, once it's in standard form, which it was, you can determine A, B, and C. Remember the quadratic formula, x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And if you forget that, I've done a really neat video. Just go to YouTube and search for Stickman Sings the Quadratic Formula. I mean, I've already had like 36,000 hits on it. It's a really cool song. Uh, so anyhow, there's the formula, because I sing it for you on the video. It's kind of cool. And I sang it in class, but I won't put you through it again. So we have x is equal to the opposite of b, which is 5. So opposite of 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared minus 4, which is part of the formula, a is 2, c is 7, and this is all over 2 times a. So, x is equal to the opposite of 5, which is a negative 5, plus or minus the square root of 5 squared is 25, minus, okay, we have um, 8 times 7 is 56, and this is all over 4. So, continue. x is equal to a negative 5 plus or minus the square root of and let's see, 25 minus 56 is a negative 31. And this is all over, ooh, all over 4. And remember that when I have a discriminant, some of you may not have been taught that, but the quantity under the radical in the quadratic formula is referred to as the discriminant. My discriminant here is negative 31. When my discriminant is negative, it means I is going to be involved in the answer. And we'll look what this becomes. Negative 5 plus or minus I root 31, right, all over 4. Now I'm going to turn the paper over and show you something, especially for those of you going on into pre-calculus. Negative 5 
plus or minus i root 31 over 4 is actually an appropriate answer. You can write your answer, and of course this is x equals. But what you may want to do, for those of you going on to pre-calculus, in pre-calculus a lot of times you get into, with, with um, complex numbers, you get into the a plus or, mi plus or minus bi form. So it's sometimes good to split it up and write your answer as negative 5 fourths. See what I did? I split the front part up. I put a plus or minus in the middle. And then at the back, I would have the square root of 31 over 4 in front of the i. Now, in college algebra, I would never take off points if you didn't do that. But this is a great idea. Uh, for those of you going on into higher level courses, a lot of teachers like to see this. And we're done.